Yo, what's going on, guys? I am Bear DeGidio. We are back with another episode of the Jackson Podcast. I'm sitting here with the one and only Rampage Jackson, and we have a very special legend in the house. This is without a doubt one of the most requested guests in our Jackson Podcast Discord, in our Jackson Podcast community channel on YouTube. And we have Michael J. White in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Man, thank the you one for coming, only. My brother, my brother. Yeah, we, we was talking about you the other day, and um, yeah. we was we was saying, I I said that you basically one of the only actors that does martial arts that I, that I wish would have fought. Because mm. I trained with you before. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I know you know your shit. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, I, I'm a I'm a nerd with it. I love I love the I, I, the thing the thing for me is like I think the most talented thing that I had is fighting, and so there's a part of me that like my heart goes out to fighters because I feel like in essence I, that's what I was supposed to do. That's what I was put on the earth to do, and that's why when you know I get a chance to train with people like yourself, John Jones, or whatever. I love to like, you know, impart the wisdom and, and trade off and and just, you know, because you're, you're living like kind of what I wanted to do. Uh, so, man, you know, it's, it's you know, I, I don't know. I get choked up about it, but I, I my heart goes out to to fighters all the time. That's why I always like to work with them and um, and like kind of create avenues after you guys fight, because, man, you guys are heroes for a lot of people. You know, and and sometimes it breaks my heart to see the 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 next chapter in a lot of fighters' lives, yeah, and, and but and that's why I'm so proud of you and what you're doing here, and you know the fact is, man, I've been a fan of you from day one. Oh, thank because you, of who you are, man, the charisma you got, you know, the the nobility you got, and you you're helping other people. You go, you know, you you don't hide from who you are and you helping others that have to go through other th other things. And, and that's just like, that's what a hero does, man. So uh, when I heard about this, man, I was, I was you know, that's my brother and I'm going to be here. Thank you, for man. Him, you know, that means you know. a lot, man. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I trained with him before and I, I remember him showing me the um, jab and I use it. I use it sometimes because you, you got that jab where it's, um, you can't see it coming. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of, a lot of fighters and a lot of fight fans don't know that you could have been a fighter. I think if you probably, if MMA was around back before you went into acting, I think mm -hmm. you probably would have went into fighting. Yeah, de definitely I would have. Um, that's that's why, you know, even though I was doing the things I was doing, I always would get together with some of my favorite fighters, like Gokan Saki and, or whatever. And from Maurice Smith, like early days when yeah, he was in yeah, the champ. Man, yeah. And, you know, even though part of it is like, are you crazy? You sitting, <laughs> you're getting in the ring with Maurice Smith. But I was like, I love it. Even if he knocked my head off, man, I would still be like you know, just happy because I get a chance to test myself with other people. But, you know, these people, you know, we we train together. We become friends. I, I learn more. I learn stuff from everybody, man. So I don't know. I, I was just I consider myself one of the luckiest martial artists on the planet. But like, uh, yeah. So to, to tr continue to train with it and. And everything, man. I'm like kind of kid in the candy store, really. Has any fighter or actor tried to, uh, you know, try you mm. sparring around something like that? Yeah. Well, I love it. Like, yeah, yes and no. Um, there's, you know, you know, I used to train with a lot of the K1 guys, and anytime there was, you know, they needed a sparring partner, I I'd, I'd jump in there because I got Frankie Lyles. You know, was one of my um, my best friends. Uh, he was a super middleweight champion in the world, and I. Got him into the you know training the guys in K one, and so every now and then I get a chance to you know train against you know or, or spar with some of the people at the the, the top of the, the line. You know we kind of started by training Bob Sapp first. Yeah, yeah, I heard this. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, and so yeah, uh, it, it's kind of like a, a guilty pleasure for me. But um, yeah, but yeah, every now and then there, there'll be people. I, I used to think that somebody's going to challenge me. Like somebody is going to be like, oh, he's just a, he's just an actor. Yeah. And, and, and I'm like, uh, you know, I'll be like, okay, well, yeah, let, let's, let's see what's up. Where's your, where's your gym? I'm known for kind of doing that. Right. I heard whispers about you on Sylvester. Um, no, no, no. What's it? Steven Seagal. I heard, yeah. I heard whispers. Yeah, a lot whispers. Of, yeah. A lot yeah. Of whispers. There was a lot of whispers. Yeah. About what? You and yeah. Steven Seagal. Like, 
I think he challenged you. I don't know. No. no okay. No, my man, no, my no. We heard them. We heard them, yeah. No, uh-huh. no. Steven Seagal's not a fighter. Uh-huh. Everybody knows that. <laughs> you know, I mean. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, no. You, you, he, be you training, know, he be training MMA guys no, now. he doesn't. Yeah, I saw him. He I saw him. Yeah. I'm here with Alex Pereira now. Yeah. yeah well, no, no. Because out of respect, people respect him because of his stature and, and everything. Just like, you know, like, like uh, Anderson Silva and folks like that. Yeah, who don't want to meet a, a, a somebody they grew up looking looking at in, in movies or whatever? But you know, but of course it bolsters his position and makes him look like he's a yeah. you know, legitimate fighter. But I mean, I don't feel like he needs to even do that because he is a legend yeah. as a movie star. That's what you are, you know. And it's not like Steven Seagal ever had to block a punch from a from anybody trying to hit him in the face yeah. in his whole career. That's He's that's not his skill set, but it's okay for he he wants to look he wants to legitimize himself, um, by being around you know fighters. Okay, that it is what it is. Like you know, this, but you know, of course, my man is not a fighter, um, or you would have known about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> yeah. so is he really not as as trained and as versed in martial arts as everybody thinks? Well, he's trained in. Uh, Aikido. 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 How do yeah. you say that? I, I, yeah, I saw him showing. I, yeah. Aikido. Yeah. Which, come on now. It's, it's, that's choreography. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm not trying to disparage him. It's just, it's like, yeah. You can, I, it's a slap in the face of people who, you know, put their lives on the line and their, their hearts and minds and everything else to really fight. So, yeah. you know, I'm on the side of people who really do it. And mm-hmm. even, even though, you know, I'll get in the ring with anybody, I'm not a fighter. Mm. That's not how I made my. But you could like, be though. I I could, but I still can't claim to be a fighter. That's not what I. It's not how I. You know how, how I feed my family. Yeah. That goes to you guys, man. And I and, and I say, man, respect. all the power to you and the respect to you because you you you're doing you do you do that for the sake of so many others, man. You, you are our gladiators. You know, there's a part of my heart that feels like that's you know what I was meant to do. And so I get a chance to to train with some of the best people and still test myself, test my will or whatever. But no, that's not what I do for a living, man. That that goes to you guys, man. I I feel like our you know, you guys, you know, like I said, man, you guys are our heroes. You you guys, we live vicariously through uh you guys put yourself on the line. You you know, to be that naked and and exposed, you know, for the sake of others and for you know for you to you know train and bleed and do all of that for your family man that's heroic man and yeah, we don't think it, should, it like that though no but it is man and, and, it is. and yeah. it's where it should be that's why i can't say myself stagall whomever i can't call us fighters no come yeah. on stop it yeah. you know that yeah. you know we we don't have we don't have to Bur- you know, like kind of walk the burning sands that you guys do. I just think it's it's, it's all according to time. Because, mm. like I said, I think if uh, MMA was probably more popular or around sooner, you, and you didn't get into acting, you like, man, I got to hustle. I know this. I got this skill set. I think about it like like what you said, like gladiators. I think about it sometimes. You know, mm. sometimes I'm just in my room playing video games. So I think about it. Weird mm. shit. I think about, what if I was born a couple thousand years ago? I've mm. probably been one of those gladiators fighting to death, you know? And yeah. I, can't, I can't fathom that right now. I wouldn't want to fight to death. Then I think about slavery days. I would probably mm. been one of those Mandingo warriors. What do you, yeah. you call them? Like like Django in the movie, Django. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think about shit like that. Yeah. That's weird to think like that. Yeah, but you know, our natures, are, we are warriors. I mean, we, the, we're following, like, we naturally trend in that direction. You know, uh, I think you're, you're right. I, it had had this had um, had UFC UFC been around earlier on, where um, it's widely respected or whatever, I'm sure I would have done it uh, early on. And I, you know, I even thought, you know, like I was saying, I was holding out that I'd be challenged and I would maybe do a yeah, a, 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 you know, some kind of a special fight or whatever. But I satisfied that by just going to everybody's. Gym and just sparring, it's just sparring yeah, without and, a crowd and, and train, <laughs> training with them where, they, where they're at their best and, and at their home gym, you know. Yeah. And like you know, I mean, shit, like to train with you know John Jones at his at his home at his house in his gym and and test stuff off of him. That's like, dude, I, I'm a kid in the candy store. How did that go? Because John, he's he's like the best to do it. I yeah, have to, well, I have to say that. 
Well, John said some stuff. He says he was going to, you know, he was going to post stuff on, you know, the internet. He didn't post it. He, he, he didn't, he didn't post it, but, but like, man, we had a great time. Um, you know, he said a few things on, on, on social media about, about that, that, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel good. To, you know, <laughs> I didn't hear what he said. Yeah, well, you know, he he said something in the line that he was humbled and he got his ass whipped. That's what he said. Wait, you went to John Jones' house and you put the hands on him? That's how, that's how things. You yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. That stuff goes back. <laughs> Wait, that's, yeah, that's what well, he does. I just want to make sure I heard this right. <laughs> no, no, man, we we had a good. Uh, hey, listen, yeah, break it there's, down there's slowly, gonna, though. There's gonna be. Uh, you know, not to sound arrogant, there's going to be there's going to be things that I do that's unusual to him, right? I've been doing it for a long time, and but now things I could get away with the first time, I probably wouldn't get away with the second <laughs> yeah. time. And if we was if we were grappling more, then you'd have slammed me around the room. But technically, of course, there's there's things that I'm going to do that he's he hadn't seen. So um, it's not like I didn't amass certain techniques and things that, you know, is yeah. common, you know? So, um, yeah, I would test those things and I would like to, you know, pass those on. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, of course, the first time, and I think with anybody, it's going to catch them by surprise. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so there were things that he, he, he felt, um, uh, you know, a uh, little overwhelmed with. How, yeah. how, how was you with uh, Remy Bojanski? Remy? Remy. Oh he's, yeah, he's yeah. a great kickboxer. Yeah, he's great. But like, I'm you know, I'm a, I'm such a nerd with it, and so my thing is, okay, I would look and I go, all right, defense. Remy would only do this as defense, because usually people are just throwing ones and twos, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and then of course the. I would look at just like with John, his his, his um, length of uh, you know, his arm length and everything else. I always said, if you move, what would John do if somebody knew how to move to his right? I don't think he has the footwork to deal with somebody cutting an angle to his right. Um, and I think it was something that he learned, you know. Um, moving around, man. I need to rematch John Jones at heavyweight. <laughs> have him train me. I want that. I want that fight back. So I want to win back. About, we were gonna pull John Jones' sparring partner and bring him in. You know all the <laughs> yeah. secrets. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, but like with Remy, it's like his defense. It's like that was his flaw. He he looked great going forward, but if you make him go backward, he only he he would hold his 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 hands up and and wait for the onslaught to just be done. Uh, very much like, um, like, uh, oh my is that, goodness. Is that the tie style? Is that the way to? Yeah. So yeah, every, every, that's what, that's what the thing is. Like when you, when you learn several styles and try, see, I did so much boxing, right? Not many martial artists did as much boxing as, as I would do and was uh, exposed to as much block, boxing. So footwork was a mainstay with me. I couldn't not see that. And so just like, um. Yeah, yeah, certain, certain, uh, who, damn, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, brother that was, uh, Mike, uh, shoot, he was actually my stand in for, for, for a while with, uh, gold. Uh, damn, why am I? Uh, I know you're talking about that, that, uh, K1 guy? Yeah. Michael McDonald. McDonald, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a very similar thing. Like, a lot of these guys are almost self taught, like John, mm. but there's certain, um, basics that they might skip over that if somebody had that basic, they could kind of um, uh, work that against them. But you have to have to, you, you have to have that ability to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So your movement has to be sharp for, you know, for them to expose their lack. Yeah. So, you know, so it's just certain things where with a lot of the K1 guys, the, uh, other than Gokan Saki, a lot of them didn't throw the combinations where were you know in in a very efficient way. Yeah, uh, yeah. So so yeah. So there's always you know like styles make fights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you can change different styles, then you know you you kind of like Floyd Mayweather could just, you know change styles mid you know in the middle of the round. 
then you can kind of exploit uh, the weaknesses that you yeah. see. I wish I was more like that. I, I was always like more like one dimensional. Once I started knocking people out, I kind of got addicted to it. <clears throat> well, what you had that I look, looked at, or you exposed the fact that nobody had defense. You would slip and, and you know, you were slip and rip. Yeah, I love and, that. And yeah, and I was like, that's what I first saw. I was, I was like, man, he's going to exploit the hell out of folks, you know, because I would see that flaw that everybody's used to lose. one, two, and that's it. One, two. But anybody like you, like Anderson, like uh, Leoto, who is going to slip the first punch or, you know, and make you pay for missing. You took that to a, a whole nother level. And then, you know, when we got together, I would always try to, I wanted to encourage you to get those kicks, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. we work on those kicks and that hip, because you got strong, you know, uh, hip torque and everything else. So, I mean, you know, it, it's it's about just putting all those things together. Yeah, I used to kick more when I was fighting in Japan. Mm -hmm. but when I came over to the UFC, I didn't want to kick that much because people mm -hmm. would desperately try to take you down. And, and, the refs will let you lay on people there. Mm. And in Japan, they, they, they wouldn't lay on you that much because they give a yellow card. Right, right. And, they, and people didn't know that yellow card took 10% of your purse. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Pride, right? Yeah. That's a crazy penalty. Imagine, yeah. you would see no stalling in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You, yeah, they did that. So people would take you down, they just leg hump you. Mm -hmm. what, what, what got you into boxing? Was it you doing that Tyson movie or you got into it before that? Well, I was a, I was into it like early on. Shit, when I was a kid, I was into it. Um, but I was so damn big. Uh, at 13... Um, they, they, they basically kicked me out of PAL because I was, I, you know, I, I haven't grown since I was like about 13, 14. You so I was height, like around this height. Yeah. And build so, it. and so, and, <clears throat> I, and I hit hard, like, cause I was still doing karate, but like, um, I got into boxing pretty early on, but then when I started training, um, uh, with, uh, with Frankie Lyles, that exposed me to you know training with other other folks. With I was training with Joe Goosen and and uh, you know and Tommy Hearns and, and wow. Cronk Jim and wow. all these things. And I, and I started really starting to apply martial arts to the boxing I was learning and the footwork and the, you know the hips and the movement and all that kind of stuff. And so then I started really kind of putting all those things together. So you did boxing first. I assumed that you did martial arts first. No, it's martial arts first. But I you know I did. A style called you know, Kyokushin. You yeah, know, that's, Kyokushin. Oh, that's the that's the um, most deadly style of uh, karate. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's it. I call it like the Navy SEALs in martial arts, and I think really because of the spirit, it, it, you know, you derive from it because mm -hmm. it's hard. Yeah, you know, you you're gonna <laughs> they put you to the point where you want to stop, but you your your will and your determination has to overcome that. Like that's just part of the whole curriculum of Kyokushin. And even, you know, second to the techniques, it's your spirit, you know, to, to move on and go through the, the fire, basically. That's what I think is the special part about that. Is that the, is that the original art of karate? Because some of it look like it's watered down, you know, like the point karate and all that. Yeah, no, yeah, but yeah those are, those are di two different things. It was like the most basic karate is kind of like, it's like Shotokan. Oh, okay. And it's kind of, it started with Goju and then Shotokan was Goju made easy. Mm. You know, in a way. And then it became um, more of a uh, business. And a lot of the the harder <clears throat> elements about it started to go away. Uh, but so there was a lot of different karate styles. Uh, but it like, you know, like I say, it became a business. And then you didn't see people fighting quite as hard as the early days. Kyokushin was one that kept the fighting up. Um, and a lot, you know, you have, you know, you have um, uh, George St. Pierre, Kyokushin, a um, few, few others like. Uh, well, what's it, you know, uh, when I learned about Kyokushin, it was on K1, what, what's his name? Francisco Filo? Filo, Filo yeah. That's what I learned yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. was a tough motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he was testing me for my third degree. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought, man, they had me, I, you know, in, in Kyokushin, you got to do 30 man fights. I didn't know that. Yeah, they they man, you got if you fight, you got to fight thirty damn fresh people trying to knock you out. Are they black belts or they're yeah, lower? Yeah, all, all black belts. And what? if you get knocked, if the 29th person knocks you out, you didn't make it. 
Are you serious? D- dead serious. That's how you test for a belt in crooked shit. Well, yeah, another, you know, other levels. And man, I was so nervous because I, you know, I thought they were going to try to put me with Francisco Fijo at the at the end. Um, but no, he was he was just one of the judges. <laughs> hey, we should yeah. we should yeah. we should get you a belt and and. And critical shit. You should you that, should that, go ahead and train that, for that it. type of karate in terms of you yeah. getting your black belt. The the three technique or it's like technique and then uh, form and sparring. Right? There's like the three components of that. Well, yeah, and that like different belt levels. You yeah. might have you know forms and all, all kinds yeah. of you know diff- different things like that. So in terms of testing and having your black belt, just in for the Jackson podcast community, can you kind of break down all the martial arts that you have belts in, and that way they can kind of see the the versatility that you have? Right, yeah. I've got uh, you know, black belts in Kyokushin, Shotokan, Tang Sudo, Goju, um, uh, Kobudo. Uh, shoot, where am I going? Uh, well, it's like three Korean, like th- some Koreans and some J- Japanese and some Okinawan styles. Basically, like like that. That sounds like my sex life. This one got, <laughs> <laughs> this one got belts. Yeah, and then I then I trained out under um, Bill Wallace Systems, Super Superfoot Wallace, and oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and a, and a guy named Joe Lewis. Also, these are two of my my heroes uh, in the kickboxing world. That's crazy. Yeah. Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis is, the, is that's the boxer? No, Joe Lewis, the martial art, the 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 uh, heavyweight, undefeated. Uh, fighter oh yeah it, he he was um he done some movies but um he's is joe l-e-w-i-s oh okay yeah yeah he he was and you look at some old uh, recordings of him he was like kicking people out of rings like he was devastating he was like muscular but explosive i'm sure i see yeah. him. i'm sure yeah. i see him. did you spar with mike tyson when you trained when you no did no no i always wished i i did but you met him when you did the movie I, not when I did the movie, he was in, in prison. Oh, but we we have so many friends in common, and we were we had been around each other. I don't know several times. Was he cool? Did you play him? Yeah, so? he did. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was he was cool about it. He came out. He was very you know, uh, very flattering uh, to me. Like I was you know, and, but we basically I don't know if I always feel weird. I never wanted to talk about that stuff with him. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, just just by by the way, you remember. When uh, Bob Sapp getting the, you know, when uh, uh, Mike Tyson. Signed the contract, big boy. Yeah. Well, me and Frankie engineered that whole thing. No way. Yes, we did. Went to Ishii, you know, went to Ishii and said, hey, what 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 would you do? You know, we get Mike Tyson to come in and, and, and challenge uh, Bob. If you look at that, now Frankie's in the ring and I'm on the outside of the ring telling all the uh, the security just, just chill. It's, it's, this is going to happen. But we met with Mike in his room and pitched it to him, and said, "Okay." And once we did it, you know, there was, you know, how you know how that works. Yeah. And uh, because that's when I was training Bob Sapp. Me and Frankie was training him, mm. and so that we, you know, we concocted that whole thing. That would have been great if that fight would have went down. How would he have yeah. done? No, you, huh? How would he have done? Who would have done? How, how Bob would have done yeah. against yeah. Tyson? You think? Uh, just boxing? Yeah. Oh, uh, not well. <laughs> I don't think. Not not well. You got no faith in your training. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's my boy, man. But but uh, Bob, Bob said, even, even let me tell you that day because he fought chemo that day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bob, we had Bob looking great in the back. You know, jab, push him. Off, you know, push him off balance. Chop that leg. Come over the top. It was like he gonna kill chemo. Bell rings. It's like Bob, man. He would just lose it. He just go Donkey Kong all of a sudden. <laughs> That's what they called him in Japan. Yeah, he would just go Donkey Kong and throw everything out the out the window that we worked uh, on. All the nerves. Yeah, it's, it's it just was like you know, damn, man. We already talked to Mike Tyson about this. We hope he wins. It, got, it was a little bit of a long count, if you noticed. Yeah. Between yeah between those rounds, but then we was like sitting there going. Mm. Uh, we 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 might lose our little you know our little side pay if getting getting Tyson in there. Why did the fight never happen though? Man, that was publicity. Uh, you know how that goes. Man, I, but it, it could have happened. That could have been one of the first. Uh, the, yeah, little, pretty little, viral clip. You know, yeah, yeah. kind of things like how we doing yeah. now with the boxing versus 
yeah. MMA yeah. kind of yeah. thing. That could have that could have led the charge. But uh, it, you know, it, it never happened. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, I love we, I we, love, we yeah. set it up to happen. Yeah, I wish it would have happened. Yeah, I love Bob. You know, I got much respect for him. He's like yeah. my big bro. Mm. But you know, he he. By hard though, I just think he's just not a fighter. He's like a football player and stuff like that. I just think in, mm -hmm. inside him, you know, he he goes out there. He he beats some great people, but sometimes yeah. he just go out there and just look yeah. for the payday. Yeah, Bob Bob is an, a, a hell of an athlete, and I used to I I used to want him to just explain to the audience just so they're not feel don't feel disrespected that he's re representing at that time twenty different products. Ishii had him. The, he was the face of so many things, like Nestle, uh, um, Panasonic. Uh, yeah, Panasonic. Everything. He had all of these uh, items. And when we'd be in Japan, he'd have a schedule that was crazy. Then they throw a, a fight at him, in a, for a weeks in a week's notice with a killer who all they do is fight. Yeah, fans don't know about that. They don't they? even know. And I'm like, yeah, Bob, could you just explain that you had a week? Just so people understand that you know that you're not just punking out or, or you you didn't have it with you. like so that's disrespectful to the audience. Yeah. But he never wanted to explain. He he never wanted to give an excuse. I wonder why. I, I don't. I don't know. I got an excuse for every time I lose. Every <laughs> <laughs> single one. Probably didn't feel a need. Maybe he thought he was. You know, Bob said, "Yeah, taste. he would never. He would yeah. never do that." I'm like, man. You know, explain this to folks because they don't yeah. know. I remember the first time he fought in Pride, we was in the same locker room and he mm. was like kind of nervous. I, was, I looked at him. I didn't know who Bob Sapp was. Mm. That was my first time. The big giant. I'm like, who are you fighting, bro? And he was like, you think I'm going to win? You think I'm going to do good? You think I'm going to yeah. win? I'm like, who are you fighting? He showed me a little bit of Japanese guy. I was like, I'm like, bro, you should win on pure blackness. <laughs> <laughs> he started laughing, right? He went out there, I watched him, and he threw an uppercut, he missed, and he knocked the guy with his bicep. Right, so, you remember yeah, that fight? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, Bob, man, man, nothing scarier than when Bob is in the gym throwing combinations properly. I remember holding the pad for the low kick, and he lifted me up in the air from the low kick. And I just was like, uh, Frankie, I want you to hold the pad from now. <laughs> it was that that's frightening. Yeah. What he's able what he is able to do physically is frightening. When he puts that all together, oh, who was it? When he he had time to train before, I think was it um uh, Musashi or, uh, it was somebody he had time to train with and he and it was he showed the glimpse of how frightening he is on a real training camp or if he locks in and stays with the technique because he only needs like three or four. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, it's almost like, like when you're playing a video game and you've got too many weapons, you don't know which one. To, <laughs> yeah. And so he, he just, mm, he starts doing that. <laughs> he looked really good against Anessa Hoos though. Oh yeah. Yeah. He looked yeah. like he, he looked like, he, oh, think about what, um, um, uh, think about, uh, uh, the twin, um, uh, Nogueira. N N Nogueira. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to kill him. Yeah, yeah. He fucked his back up or, or something like that. Yo, that, that. that looked like... There might, Bob was punching him like this, but can you imagine if his el like he had yeah. his elbow up and, and punched yeah. this way? Yeah. That might have been a murder up in that ring. Yeah. I mean, that, that's frightening. Can, yeah, can you imagine if he had technique, somebody as big as Bob Sapp had like technique like that, like a real... That's what I'm talking about, Quentin. Yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. We would we would train at um at uh, uh we we have him at Legends and we there was another place we was in Mel I think he, we moved the gym to another place so me and Frankie was working with him but when he's turning his elbow on when his hip is behind the, the nerves when he getting to fight the nerves it, it, it's so. frightening because you. you I'm like, dude, man, we gonna be, we gonna get a manslaughter charge <laughs> if he if he stays with technique. Yeah. Yeah. It's big and and, and pop. Look, I remember when we did uh, when we did um, blood and bone together. I would, you know, Bob is faster than people think. I remember I said, Bob, I want you to throw full full black. I want I want I wanted to look very real, and I remember one time. He's throwing the punch, and I forgot the choreography for a second, and I was thinking, am I supposed to be? And the punch was coming at me, and I ducked, and I heard, Poof. 
And I was like, hey, let's uh, cut, cut. <laughs> because I was like, that felt like a helicopter blade went over my head, man. I was like, if, if, he's like, you, you still want me to throw it? Like, <laughs> he said, just like that motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm, I got to make sure I know when to duck. Because one of these, man, is just going, yeah, it's going to change my man, whole life. Man, I would have loved to see Bob like uh, out there like that with all the skills. And, yeah, yeah, man, it's 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 a thing. It's it's kind of like it's good that he didn't have that that heart of a boxer mm. or a real fight. I feel uh, because I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, he, that could have just been terrible. Yeah, he was a big dude, and he also had a lot of power, like you always talk about. And you you've been out there with him a yeah. few times, and he trains heavy. Yeah. As we talk about Tyson, though, what's your thoughts on Tyson versus Jake Paul? Wow, I mean, it, it, I would think that, you know, I, I would think that he probably would be a little much for Jake Paul because I mean, Jake is not that much bigger. I mean, Tyson was always used to much bigger guys, and when I just think about. What's what's Jake Paul going to do if Tyson hits him in the body? I just don't think he's ready for that. I think the only thing Jake is probably banking on is taking Tyson in deep waters because he's older. That's that's the only thing I can see. Yeah, I, 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 I can't see how Tyson doesn't land to his body at some point in the first round. I mean, when you get hit by somebody who's thrown that punch a million times, it's just different yeah i remember sparring with layman brewster one time and he he hit me with a body shot that looked like he didn't wasn't even trying that hard and that felt like he punched through me mm. and because the, the leverage and everything did you, know? you drop did you take a knee oh uh, no no i i basically cried on the inside now <laughs> Because what, what, I have I have a thing to where I don't know where this this happened come from I don't know if I'm a little uh, uh, what do you call it um, masochistic um, but when I get hurt it makes me laugh at myself <laughs> and I, I I laugh at how fucked up that it was I'm like <laughs> oh shit I'm like I'm, so that's me I, I don't know it's the yeah. I love fighting and you know. It, that's kind of my response, and I, I guess it's a good response because people don't know how hurt hurt I am. I guess I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but I, 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 I really like. Oh, this, this, this sucks. This sucks a lot. Yeah, know? the body shots, then they can they can cripple you. Yeah, yeah, and I just I just love when people are good at what they do, mm. and so I, I, you know, I, I stand back and applaud it. <laughs> you know, you know, crazy. You, yeah. you, you. Karate guy, and you do boxing. I was in Tampa recently with um, Riddick Bo, and uh, he took me to the gym to show me like speed bag and all this stuff. And uh, right. guess who walked in there? Um, Razor Ruddick. You remember that guy? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Donovan Razor Ruddick. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a cool guy. He, he he was telling me that he's he's putting karate with boxing. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's cool, huh? That that, that is cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to love to like go around with boxing because, you know, like I said, I, I developed something that comprised my martial arts stuff. With boxing, and that's that thing where it's like it's hard to detect, you know, uh, whatever you know blow I'm coming from. So it's a little um, confusing for, for yes. boxers. But you know, of course, I first thought like, oh well, boxers, you know, they're gonna they're gonna expose the hell out of me. There's, but it, it wound up working. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, oh, you know. So my thing is, all right, um, you know, test it. You know? Yeah, a lot of people don't see that. They don't see. People mixing boxing with, a, 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 you know, a karate or anything like that. You don't see that often. Right. But, uh, but when I look at Floyd Mayweather, he's doing things that precisely that I was kind of working on. For real? Oh, yeah. Because Floyd Mayweather, if you slow him down, he leads with the weapon. And that's the thing that I've been professing. Like the thing I was showing Kimbo or whatever. It's a little thing, but like when you're striking, right? Traditional boxing, you you hear it for decades. Look at the chest. When the chest flexes, then the punch is coming. Well, that's a bit of a flaw in my my estimation because that means you're you're flexing this before you throw the blow, and you got a trainer. Meeting your punch. This trainer was 55 years old. Why is he meeting the punch of a 20-year-old? 
something's wrong. So they're teaching you how to, you know, uh, just kind of um, indicate. You, you, they're, they're telegraphing. There's a telegraphing. But now, if I punch with my weapon, my chest ain't flexing. My weapon is moving. It looks like I'm too far away. But I do this, right? And then by this point, I turn my hip and shoulder, and all of a sudden that punch is right at you. So that's one of the things I'm do, you know, that Floyd kind of does. And that's why, you know, when I look at Floyd, I go, yeah, there's a reason he's hitting people cold when they're not ready for it because he's doing that. And Roy Jones was doing that too. And if you, if you put it side by side, Roy Jones, Floyd Mayweather, Bruce Lee, you're going to see a very similar thing. Mm. They're all leading with the, with the weapon, right? So this is going at you already. Well, it looks like it ain't going to make it. But then I keep going and I turn. But you're used to seeing me turn. And now you know what's yeah, yeah, coming. Yeah, T.O. was talking yeah. about that, uh, Bruce Lee. Yeah. But that's that Kimbo Slice video, right? You like yeah. telegraphing that, you were showing that? Yeah, because when, when I was showing Kimbo, because I said, you know. Can you we, show me? Can you show this? I, let's absolutely. show the podcast real quick. Show, show us real quick. <laughs> if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Show, show us real quick. You don't do have I, to I really stay in the seat? Or no, no, no. Right here. Okay. Gonna, I want to I show the audience. Oh, they, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll put okay. words on there when y'all okay. talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see this. Okay. It's, it's, it's yeah, really he, he, thinks, he thinks he's Rocky now, so he want to learn from Bucks. Oh, stop. Okay, really? This guy's all sick and he used me as a sparring partner. Okay, so what's your, fa your fastest hand? Is it your right your, hand? My, my, my front hand, right? Your jab? No, what's, what's your fastest hand? Oh, my hand? right hand. Okay, right. okay, why don't you put your right hand out? Okay. Right here, right? Okay. You don't let me hit your hand. Okay. Just move it out the way. Okay. And so, here's... Here's what, do, please do not let me hit your hand. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm, here's the first punch. Ready? Yeah. yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm trying not to hit you. Okay. <laughs> All right. But here's the second punch. Do not let me hit your hand. Okay. Don't. <laughs> no, 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 seriously, try yeah. not to let me hit okay. your hand. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. All okay, right. Yeah. All right, so you see I'm not telegraphing, but now watch. Don't let me hit your hand, yeah. right? You see that? Yeah. That was faster, but there was a telegraph. I see you it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Again, now hold your hand out. Okay? That's not telegraph. So he doesn't know it's coming until. Tell me first, though. Tell me first. <laughs> so, so you, so There's you, no way you're actually hitting my hand. You're doing something special. Like he he's something not telegraphing. I'm, yeah, I'm right here yeah, watching he's it. He's not telegraphing. He's just not telegraphing. Okay. But now I'm going to get back here and I got to move my whole body. Okay. Don't let me hit your head, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so. <laughs> So, so the thing is, if I use speed and not telegraph, okay, and you you know it's coming toward your hand, mm -hmm. um, if it's coming toward your face, you never know. Yeah. If you can't move your hand out the way, you'll never move your, your chin out the way. Yeah. So basically, doing that with hooks and it, it, you know the, the the you know reverse punch, you know the the power punch. Mm -hmm. If you do that, and somebody, I mean, a real test of a, a technique is. You can't defend yourself against it even even when you know it's coming. Yeah. If you can't defend yourself even when you know what's happening, that's a good technique. That's something that, well, on point, I'm going to hit you every time I try to. That's crazy. I yeah. actually tried to move my hand. Yeah, you don't that's see it. I was kind of pissed. You don't see it. He I showed me that a long time ago, but I, I want to train it, but you forget about it if you don't train it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I was, I, I, you frustrated me because you, you was like, <laughs> You you said, man. Oh, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell my. You know, I want you to talk to my 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 people and have you know, kind of teach them how to train. And I was like, yo, let's let's do this, man. Because I want to. I want to see you like. Yeah. I I feel happy seeing the techniques. You know. Yeah. Because people weren't up on it, right? Yeah. And so yeah. So but it, it, and I, and I wanted to work on your kicks too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Because where I was this? It was in Huntington Beach. I yeah, think. Yeah. 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 Were you training at his gym? Yeah. 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 We'll come oh, up no, to train. Oh, it was my gym down yeah, south. Yeah. 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 That's where it was. Yeah. So were you training MMA fighters at the time or working with them or? Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of people. A lot of people even come to my house sometimes. Like you know. No way. Yeah. I mean, I I just love it. I you know I you know and I would I I like to. I don't know. I mean, it's just one of the things I'm just in into. Uh, but um, and my thing is like, what am I going to do with it? 
I'm 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 playing make believe. <laughs> you know, so so please have but, at I mean, it. You know, you're obviously skilled, mm. and you obviously yeah. have a, a a mastery of all these disciplines that you're mm -hmm. teaching. So that's that's the authentic side of it. I think you, that's you the should. Side people respect you. You should train some fighters, though. You should have you like uh, yeah, I I have, and sometimes you know I've been flattered where like if I had the time, I remember when yeah. um uh you know uh, who, uh El Kukui wanted me to come up to Tony Ferguson. Yeah, uh, up to um, Big Bear. But I just was busy at the time. But I really, I mean, he was somebody I really loved. And I really wanted to go over some stuff, like some some evasive and head movement things with him. Because, uh, you know, it just, you know, when you have all of these, you know, mixed martial arts, you don't get a chance to develop a lot of these different things, you know. And I've been blessed to be able to, Damn, I've been training with like Tom, you know, Tommy Hearns and Frankie, and then over here with with uh, Benny Arquitas and all of that. And I've been blessed, man. It's like, and then you know, all it uh, you know, wrestling and all uh, and, and yeah. jujitsu. I actually started with jujitsu. I didn't know that. Yeah, I started with uh, Japanese jujitsu. Oh. But you know, but then um, you know, then to be able to train with Higgin Machado and. Oh. And uh, and Eddie Bravo and you know, it's it's like you know I'm trained I'm doing something I love man, and you know and it's like I always feel like to who much is given much is required. Mm. Yeah, I I oh I love working on. I mean I was at, at Wild Card yesterday, <laughs> and you know you know and I you know I love helping folks man. It's it's and it helps me as well. I, so, I mean, you know, luckily, I'm able to continue to be pretty damn efficient at my age. I don't feel my age. I feel I feel great. How I old just, are you? I don't want to say that. <laughs> you look young. You look you. I, you look younger than me. I'm 45. You look younger than me. Well, Quentin, you are th you are three years older than my oldest son. Shut up. Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah. Wow, I never would have guessed you with that age. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I still don't know what that age is. <laughs> but if I'm three yeah. years older than your oldest yeah, son. Yeah, you are. Yeah, damn. You're, you're three years older than my oldest son. Yeah. Like wow. Kevin Hart said, damn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you look good, though. Obviously, you're still training. Back on yeah. crack. <laughs> nah, he, he's ready for war. He hit my hand so hard, my thumb's broken. Oh, you, stop. You can, you, can still, you can still get in there if you want to and do something. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I feel like I can. Yeah. Take good care of yourself. Yeah, you know, I'm, I've been blessed. I, I, I always say, you know, you know, I come from a long list of, um, of track and field athletes. You know, railroad tracks and cotton fields. <laughs> and you don't drink. <laughs> you don't do no drugs or nothing. No, no, I, I've never, I've never been high. I, well, I've never drank. I, um, never been drunk. Never. Uh, Never smoked a joint, but I, I I I do crack though. I do crack in in and um, you know meth Mondays. You know. No, no, but no, but, but seriously, I I just never, I just I, I don't know. I was always paranoid. I was was scared that I might do the crazy shit that comes to mind. Yeah. I was like, no, you you you're not supposed to do this. You know, I I grew up like kind of you know dark. <laughs> you know what I mean, so. Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I navigated around all kinds of crazy shit growing up, and I can't couldn't fathom like, you know, even though I'm I, I'm a hit, I'm I'm lucky that I'm alive right now uh, from my you know stuff in my past. I've been on my own since I was fourteen. Wow, and you know, experienced stuff that you you normally see in movies. So that's why I'm the happiest, one of the happiest people I know because. This wasn't supposed to happen. You know, all these these blessings was not in, you know, this is unusual. Uh, I, a buddy of mine, man, I, re, I reconnected with, he's been in jail for 30 years. We, we could, reconnected on, um, on face, Facebook and, you know, start talking and I called him and I went back east and we got together and we was like, you know, I was just kicking it with him and I was trying to help him. Get get going again, you know. Get him a job, and I knew people and everything else, and would take him around. And he he's doing good now. But like while we were chilling and eating and all that kind of stuff, I was like, yeah, man, my man, he's he's making up these stories, man. He's, I was thinking he was telling a story that I was like, oh man, he believes that this shit happened. And I was like, while he was explaining it, I was like, oh shit, now I remember. I tucked away so many memories 
that he, because he was inside, I mean, so he's like a ironclad memory because that was when he was, you know, he's holding on to those memories. Yeah, that was your old life. Yeah, man. And I sit there and go, oh my goodness. He talked about about four or five things that I put out of my memory that I'm going, I am so lucky to be right here because, you know, uh, you know, and then plus I'm like, uh, how, how much can I pay you for never telling that to anybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, man. But I'm like, man, so I, yeah. bro, yeah, I, I am lucky. We are lucky. I could yeah. tell, yeah. you know, where oh, we're yeah. from, this is not supposed to happen. No, no. Yeah. You know, so we, a, a victory for you is a victory for me, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I felt that about you when I first met you. Man, thanks, man. Yeah. I, it's crazy you say that because, um, you know what? You know what gets me is like sometimes um, I feel bad when I turn people down for pitches like MMA fans. Mm-hmm. Then I think about like where I come from. Like, yeah, I, I do feel I do feel lucky. I mm-hmm. do feel lucky that people are asking me to take a picture sometimes because sometimes it get overwhelming. Like say certain times I'm at, if I'm at a airport or a restaurant or something, mm-hmm. right? But then I feel I feel guilty after sometimes I tell, tell people no because of that reason right there. Like my yeah. old life, I was thinking like, oh, man, yeah, I'm yeah. not supposed to be here. Right, I'm right. I'm supposed to be having people asking me for pictures. Like, yeah, I do feel lucky. Yeah, it's always, you just look at the other side. Something might, before you say something sucked, then look at it from another perspective. And then, you know, it's like it's the same with me where it's like, Man, sometimes you can make somebody's day just by you know d- doing a selfie with them. Yeah, I, I only I draw the line from with, with my kids or something like that. Yeah, because you know they didn't buy into that. Yeah, but yeah, man, we you know, we are very blessed, man. We are very blessed to be able to be ourselves, our authentic selves. Yeah. And um, you know, do what we what we want to do. What you know? What about if you're eating or something? If people come ask you for a picture, that that won't bother you and stuff. No, no, I mean, I there's very little that I I um that I bristle about because I know it's going to be over soon. Uh, it's different than if I'm in you know some place where you know it's about to be a a, a whole bunch yeah. of people. Yeah. Then I got to sh- shut it down. But yeah. you know I can explain so in a way where they understand. Yeah, that's why you know. Down, yeah. But I remember back in the day, the person I I look to and I admire more than anybody I've ever seen it was Shaq. Mm. I remember back in the day when Shaq was playing. People wouldn't let this brother eat anything. He would be, we'd be at Jerry's Deli or whatever. And he's like, no, no, after I eat. And they didn't give a damn. They yeah. still, while he, while he's eating, people sitting next to him and posing for pictures. And he would just stop and just smile and go back to eat. I was like, oh my yeah. God. I couldn't see, I couldn't do That's that. Rough. I couldn't do that. But, yeah. but Jack is so. He's a good guy. Dude. Yeah, he. You, he can't get away from no damn body. Right, too big. Yeah. Life, yeah. Too small, but too, when, too big. when I saw that, that he, to me, represented a line that I'm like, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna complain about shit. <laughs> you know, this, this man did this and, and I felt like his, his attitude and his, his, you know, he just was like, he shrugged it up and just, yeah. And, and just, it's part of the whole, you know. Yeah, that's thing. rough. That's rough. I, I was more like that before I fought Chuck Liddell. After I mm. fought Chuck Liddell and I got booed and people egged my house, that's when I kind of changed towards the fans. But that that is a big mutt when you eat and you're trying to eat. Cause I'm a germ freak. You know, when people talk, they spit and they <laughs> right, talking right. over your food. I'm like, God damn it. It's a little much. Did you, did you ever train with Shaq? Did he ever train martial arts? Oh, um, no, not that. Well, not with me. Oh, got it. But yeah, we, we, uh, when, um, uh, Magic, um, Magic had this uh, twenty-four hour fitness man back in the day. The one near Culver City? No, the one in Sherman Oaks. That oh, was it, the yeah. man. Every it was like it, it, it was damn near like the Grammys in there. Like it was the music was pumping. It was the the heyday. But yeah, really? we all would. You know, there was a lot of folks uh, who's who that was would be training there. Yeah. Beyonce would be. Working out there, uh, you train martial arts with Beyonce? No, no, no. Just, 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 a, just a gym. Oh, just, yeah, just yeah. a gym. But like, a little, did be you like, spot her? Did you yeah. spot her though? <laughs> you go work out right next to her. Yeah, I would have. This, this, yeah. this pre Jay Z days, mm-hmm. right? Right. Yeah. I would have spotted her. Yeah. What's the relationship yeah. uh, with Bisbing? I heard you guys had a training session. Oh yeah, yeah. See that? That's one. That's one. I'll t- I'll always talk about because that that taught my ass a lesson. Uh, <laughs> Because you know we were we were in Thailand, right? And I know Bisming was uh, he was getting ready for uh, for um, uh, George Saint Pierre. Oh wow! And so I'm like, yeah, you know, we'll you know let's mix it up, like you know get some sparring in, some training, and everything else. 
And and um, we were hanging out the, this the whole day before. He was drinking and, and all this kind of stuff. So I'm like, yeah, we're we going to work out the next day. And I always just thought, yeah, I'm always good for like four or five, you know, five minute round. And I feel, you know, I feel like, man, we started working out and I felt like I was underwater. My conditioning was horrible. And I felt so bad because, I mean, by round two, I'm, I'm useless. I'm like, man, use me as a punching bag. I felt so bad. I could not get any air. In Thailand? Yeah. Mm. For some reason, I could not breathe. I, my, my conditioning was terrible. And, I, you know, I felt, I felt embarrassed. And he's like, oh, it's okay. And I'm like, no, nah, man. Like, I'm, <laughs> I am way better than this. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't represent me. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, it's like, but, you know, I, my body couldn't do what my mind was telling it to. Yeah. And so that was, that was something that where I'm like, uh, I, you know, I never would let myself be in that bad a condition again. Because one of the things was once I was leaving Thailand, I was going to Dubai and I was going to be training with uh, Gokan Saki, which, you know, he was a monster. And you know he was he, they call him the Turkish Tyson, mm. and I'm like I can't be in this condition with uh, with Gokhan. You know should he want to go some hard ass rounds? I you know so I mean right after the Bisming thing I started like I get up at four o'clock in the morning and 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 run. I, I I'm like no I can't have an excuse like this. Anymore. How many miles would you run? I I'd run for time. Oh okay okay yeah a lot of times it'd, be, it'd just be time I I. I run for like a lot of times I would go uh, thirty to forty five minutes at a you know at a certain heart rate. Then after that, sprints. You know, so I'd go one direction for thirty or forty five minutes. Come back the other direction with wind sprints um, separate, whatever I could do. Um, so yeah, that that's wow. Yeah. Well, I trained with Bisbing many rounds and mm. he don't stop. It, he got a hell of a yeah. cardio. Yeah. He don't matter. Yeah, he's crazy drinking on Bisbing? Huh? Cardio is crazy on Bisbing? Oh, uh, oh Bisbing yeah. trains hard, man. He was one he's one of the guys I always worry about overtraining. Like the uh we was on the same team mm. and the and the and the um the coaches and stuff, they was always worried about me not training and they always worry about him overtraining. Mm. So they all the focus would be on me thinking I didn't want to train, which is not true. I trained hard when the times of my fight. Mm. But Bisbing, I, I had never seen anybody like him. Yeah. One one time we was running in Big Bear and and we was basically racing because we all compete with each other. I'm mm -hmm. I'm the biggest guy there. I'm running with Bisbing and my my old wrestling coach Zach Light. He's a little bit of guy, but he can run. He's a wrestler. Mm -hmm. And and when Bisbing wanted to win, and he and he and he's coming past me grunting mm. like you could tell he was hating every step. <laughs> 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 yeah. And Big Bear, yeah. And he came past me and he won. He beat Zach, and no one beats Zach because mm. Zach is a good runner. He's a he's he's a fighter probably like forties forty fives. And mm -hmm. Bisbing, what, he was 85-er? Mm -hmm. My God, the guy, I, that's when I got so much respect for Bisbing, when, I, when he came past me running, grunting like that. Yeah, shoot, I, I thought, hey, he, been, he was drinking all day yesterday. He ain't gonna, <laughs> yeah. he ain't gonna be good for nothing. Nah, man. Nah, I'm not Bisbing. <laughs> yeah, his, his tank was crazy. Yeah, he had another level. I got a crazy question. Is it true you've never lost a fight? I don't, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of unfair, because I it's not like I've um, fought that much. Uh, of course, there's a when I did I did point system. There's nobody who doesn't lose point system fights. It's, that's like a game of tag. Yeah. But to my knowledge, I really haven't. I didn't do that many, um, you know, sanctioned things. But no, I, I really hadn't lost any um, uh, full contact type of things. Wow. Uh, no, I, you know, Vinny, uh, is, look it up. Is it is it uh, Michael Jai that that made? Um, Steven Seagal shit himself. <laughs> was that the room? Was it? Was it him? Was it you that made him shit himself? No, no. Oh, 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 oh. You think it, it, it was? Um, you're talking about um, Gene LeBeau. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. did I? Why did yeah. I get that mixed up with you? No, I don't know why. Cause, no, cause I heard. I heard that you and him had problems though before something. You know what? I heard you guys got in a fight on set. That's I heard something like yeah. that. That's the whisper. The rumors is is you guys were on set. He said something to you. You walked over to him and said, "Yo, if you have anything to say, I'm right here." Oh no, no, that didn't happen. Oh, okay, but something people, that, like that happened. People make up rumors all the time. No, no, no that never happened. Um, oh, you know, well, 
Uh, one of the things, that, well, as Steven Seagal famously oh. said, oh, me, me and um, and John John Claude are not martial artists, which is may, I think made made him look silly. He said that. that about you. Yeah, yeah. No, um, see something happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something happened. He, but, he's but, too but, humble. But, he don't want to talk about. But, but no, 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 but no. <laughs> but he he hired me on two occasions. <laughs> so if I'm not a martial artist, why would you hire me twice? <laughs> you know, one was for uh, this Nissan Subad, and I was doing choreography and all that kind of stuff. And the other one was um, for uh, On Deadly Ground, which is a movie that he was directing. Mm. Well, the only problem, the problem I had when I really flared toward him is that um, he was hurting the stunt guys. And one of my very good friends, a guy, a guy oh, wow. named um, James Liu, uh, and uh, another friend named Nils Stewart, who were, who were nice people, but he would make it a point to like kind of even off camera, do things like wrench their arms. He actually tore Nils's bicep for no reason. Just to, and, and. But how was uh, he afterwards? Was he apologetic or? The next day he was. Oh, but right after he wasn't. Oh, do you remember a guy named Alex Desir? He was a, um, like, Alex Desir was, you know, puppy dogging <laughs> uh, Seagal, right? And I wasn't doing that. Because I didn't see what he was doing. He's, and um, he actually asked me to be on, on Deadly Ground. He says, yeah, you know, uh, we're going to do uh, this fight scenes. It's going to be, you know, you and I. And we, I was like, oh, okay. He, he asked me, I remember when I met with him and he wanted to hire me and we were in the parking lot talking about it. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then when I get to set, I find out the parameter of what the movie's about. And it's about um, these white people in Alaska mistreating the natives. Uh, and this fight was going to be at a country western bar. And I said, okay, wait a second. No, I'm, you and I, you want me to do a martial art fight scene <laughs> with you on the, but I'm fighting on the side of racist white people <laughs> in a country western bar in Alaska. <laughs> and I said, why don't you throw a yarmulke on me? <laughs> because you can, I mean, this is really ridiculous in my, and he's like, yo, I, I see your point. I, you know, and, and, and I'm like, um, well, I'll stay along. I'll, I'll help out with, you know, the, the choreography. Because we had just done the Nissan Soup um, ad commercial like weeks earlier. And so he hired me to do this stuff. And I was like, this is just freaking ridiculous. You know, I'm, I'm not just a stunt guy. And I'm an actor. So this is stupid, you know. <laughs> and so I didn't want. So, you know, but I was on as, you know, to, to help. And one time he chopped James Lou in the throat for no freaking reason. And I, I just snapped. Um, and, uh, you know, I, was, I, I, you know I, I have a little bit of a temper. But the next day I thought, well, you know, James called me and said, uh, are you coming? To, are you coming? Because we were in you know, Warner Brothers lot. And he, uh, again, Stephen Scott is the director. Mm-hmm. So he says, are you coming today? I was like, no, I'm not fired for like going <laughs> off. He says, no, no, he's, he wants everybody to get. And I came there and I wasn't unarmed because I didn't know what to expect. And, um, but he, he apologized. He says, I, you know, things got a little testy yesterday, long hours and all. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, so I stayed on. But here's the weird thing. We have, um, Seagal and I have mutual friends in common. Joseph Halpin, who's really got him, you know, he's the cop who really got him into the, you know, that program and everything else. He's a good friend of mine who produced and wrote a lot of things with Steve Seagal. Well, times, there'll be times where me and Joe are, hang, you know, hanging out, eating, and Stephen will come. And, you know, he'll, he'll kind of have this kind of dark cloud over him, and we're kind of trying to, you know, kind of cheer him up, <laughs> and, and 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 I'm like, does he for, did he forget this? Like, it's the it's the weirdest thing, and I've actually tried to help the guy in a lot of other ways. Like when when we were doing exit wounds, I got him the the personal trainer, 
that that Joe Silver, you know, dictated that he had to have, and and we never did not get along on that set. And we never had a problem, and that's why I never understood why would you. Why would you say something like derogatory? Like I know why though. Why people do yeah. that? They be hating a little bit. Yeah, but if you, but and and then I told this story too. Is that this is the truth? On on exit wounds, the producer, the director, they set the last fight, the the last scene of the whole movie to be me and Steven Zagal's fight scene. And the director said to me. We're putting the, the fight scene with you and Seagal at the very last thing. So if you fuck him up, we don't need him. We <laughs> we could finish. We could finish with his stunt double. And I'm like, Andre, are you serious? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm de- I'm dead. And I was Can we like, leave this in the pod. Huh? Can we leave this in the podcast? Of course. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and this is a, this is a true story. And I'm like. You are kidding me, right? You were trying to get me to fuck up Steven Seagal <laughs> and give him a cheap shot. Put it in, the, you know. Yeah, because we won't need him anymore. <laughs> they were tired of his ass. I'm dead serious because you know. And then, then I went to the producer. I said, Andre, you know, who's the director? I said, Andre just told me that he's. That I'm, you know, that they put in the fight scene with Steven Seagal and I at the at the end of the the the, um, the, the movie, and he's like. Yeah, because <laughs> if you really hurt him, we won't need him. I'm like, are you fucking? These people are really trying to set up Steven Seagal. They wanted to see a fight. They wanted to see him get hurt, right? I'm not going to fucking do that. <laughs> you know, yeah. again, Steven Seagal is not a fighter. Yeah, I'm that. not full of shit either. Mm-hmm. I don't like bullies. I'm not going to be one, Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. I called my manager and told him, they're trying to set me up to hurt Steven Seagal. My my manager, I'm, I'm on the phone, call, call him back in LA. I'm, you know, we're in Toronto, and he's quiet. I'm like, <laughs> he Craig, knew. Craig, are you there? He says, you know that won't hurt your career none if you did that. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, not you too. I'm like, no. I said, listen, if he tries to bully me, I have no problem. But that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, um, he gives me one, I'm gonna give him not a problem, but I know that wouldn't happen. But he, so, didn't, he didn't try, no, so what happened? In fact, when we did this fight scene, I was so I, he looked so he was so nervous, <laughs> honestly. And, and and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying yeah, to yeah, talk yeah. about like, like you know, just it's, listen, anybody is susceptible, <laughs> it's not because I'm a badass. No, anybody. That's some chicken shit stuff. It's just chicken shit. Maybe you feel like he deserves it, but fuck that. That's not who I am. You know, that's just chicken shit to hit. Because any, if I did that shit, somebody should knock my goddamn teeth out when I'm on a set. I like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no. It's, it's just simple. <laughs> nah, it's real yeah, though. All respect. So, you know, no, yeah. no. It's, it's seriously. That's not. It's it's not like I receive any kind of, you know, accolades for. It's just not, it's just wrong. And it's unprofessional as it's, well. Yeah, he didn't. So I I would have a problem with that, right? I would have a problem, you know, with that kind of a thing. I, oh, I'm supposed to go brag because I hurt a defenseless man? No. But he's not but, defenseless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, to he's us, defenseless. To, to, him, to him he is, but. He, to, he's defenseless. Yeah. <laughs> to us, to have us he's not. Have you seen him teach Alex Pierre and Anderson Stop Silva? Hey, you know, hey, wait, you, wait, hey, you know he taught Anderson Silva that, that, that kick. Me, don't, don't, don't laugh like that. <laughs> <laughs> but he pulled the kick. Yeah. Pulled the kick. Why are you laughing like yeah, that? Yeah, he taught Anderson Silva that, Ooh, that front kick. He taught the front kick. Okay, and that means what? Anderson Silva never learned how to front kick till that day. You're correct. Yeah, He didn't see Alex Pierre. You don't have. Oh. <laughs> you didn't see that. You didn't yeah, see that. I saw something with Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't even watch. I didn't even watch. We gotta show you. We gotta no, show you and see on. what you think because you'll understand it. You'll yeah. understand it. And if it's yeah. and if it's real technique, you'll be able to help me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but all of MMA knows that uh, yeah. Steven Seagal talked Anderson Silva. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We all know that. Yeah, you, your, your acting has gotten better. <laughs> <laughs> 
We, um, we're going to Anderson's son. He's hanging out outside right now. We have Gabriel Silva Is he here, here though? Gabriel Silva? No, he's, so. he's normally here. He, yeah. he told us about that. He said his dad already knew that kick. But he, did say, he did say that he went down there and he was, uh, while Anderson was warming up, he was mm. like showing him the technique, right? Mm. Or Leota said that too on the podcast, right? Like before yeah. he was doing something. Yeah. This is right here. This is a... Uh, this is him with Alex Pereira's whole team mm -hmm. at, at Glover's gym. Yeah, why are he showing him that shit? Like, we can't do that shit in MMA. Mm. Is that the uh, scratch your eyes out technique? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what it is. But poor guy. Yeah. I mean, you know. So, but I mean, obviously, he, the guy knows technique, though, right? Like, we can't discredit all of it, right? Or no? I think we can discredit all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I mean, honestly, uh, he's, you think he's ever been in a position where he had to block a punch or throw a punch at somebody who's mm. who's actually trying to hit him? You don't he, think he ever been in like any type of self defense fight? No. Look at this photo. Come on, he's standing near the champ. He's a big guy now, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people don't want smoke with him in the street. He's like at least seven feet. <laughs> well, well, a, a regular person, he, I'm sure. Oh, look, he's showing pressure points. Oh, whoa. Oh, elbow. Yeah, we, good technique. We don't yeah, do that. Yeah, and you know, then you just basically, somebody does the Hitler salute. <laughs> That's how you get. I mean, uh, okay. It's, it's. Yeah. No. Yeah, so that's similar to stuff I would Yeah, yeah, you know, I'll do this. And I'll do, you know, what, was somebody going to like hit him for doing? No. Mm. He's, it, it, you know, bless his heart. He's, he, he, he wants to be seen in these ranks got it i'm gonna tell you, i'm mm. gonna tell you this though uh oh that's uh, the kick that's the anderson silver kick he's teaching him the front kick mm. Mm. yeah that's All a right. good that is a good kick though i don't know who taught anderson silver that but that is that was a good kick i i had to worry about that a few times i just i just went back and blocked it like that but yeah, it's, this it's, is, it's, it's a good it's, kick it's like what you do to get a yellow belt <laughs> Is it is it not the first kick you ever learned? I never took I never took any belt martial arts. Yeah, it, it's you know what, uh, you teaching them Alex Pereira how to chop wood. Wait, 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 I, what is this video? I don't know. What's his shoes he got on though? What does the, what, what are shoes? those? Those are Japanese um, ch chunkless. Yeah, Japanese hammers. Okay. Oh, the hammer fist. Hmm. Yeah, I get it. I yeah, mean, yeah, as yeah. we look, but, yeah. But like yeah. I was going to say though, mm -hmm. I, I think. It would be um, a big money fight for fans to see martial artists like actors fight against each other. Like, say you mm -hmm. versus uh, Van Damme, or you know, you know, some of those yeah. people. People, wow. people would love he to see that. Van Damme would people would love insane. to see stuff like that. People mm. would, but I think it'd they be wouldn't like to see that. Why not? That would be that one of the most watched fight. Van Damme versus Jason Statham. That was sell, that was sell, that was sell out <laughs> arenas. Well, yeah, you you might be right. You yeah. might be right. It's, it, it, I don't think it would be as. A, a a ballet to the to the eyes as you might think. Yeah. <laughs> like it it wouldn't it wouldn't be very nice. You would to just look at. dismantle Van Damme. What, Jason Statham? Oh, well, you well, said Jason said, Statham he's, fighting he's, Van Jason, Damme? Jason Statham versus Van Damme. Who do you think would win? I think Van Damme would win that. And then what about you versus Van Damme? Oh, I think I would win that. Yeah, come on, that's like, a stupid yeah, question. Why are you going to ask? Who's going to say they're going to get? You, but who's going to say? I think Van Damme will kick my ass. What, what, what person? <laughs> well, no, because that? you're the one who said it oh, all. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. I think yeah, that'd well, be a big money fight. Well, you swapped him out for no, Jason Statham. I would, would, yeah, would, would never fight. fight Van so he can think about it. Yeah, so he can think about it from my eyes. That's why I swapped him out because it's hard to think when you were the guy in there fighting. Like he don't, he don't know. But I think a lot of fans will. Well, like, see, what you don't never fight Van Damme. I love the guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a real good guy. I mean, he, he's yeah, he, he's he's Is there a hero. Any, any actor you'd like to fight that fake fake pretends that they know martial arts that you'd love to show the world your technique? It's not about showing the world. I'm like, I go to your, I go mm. to your house. Who? I mean, <laughs> is there someone that you want it with? No, right. I I mean, I I like to test myself with the best people. I mean, has anybody know. ever tried to test you? I already asked him that. He, he yeah yeah yeah. He's, don't, he's very. Oh, you good. mean like a, a martial artist yeah. or somebody like that? Well, sometimes in the gyms, people want to like. Um, you know, when we move around, yeah, sometimes a that anybody, it happens. Yeah, yeah. But any, yeah, yeah. any actor or celebrity who thought they knew how to fight try to test you? No. No. Mm -mm. They know they better. Don't want to, they yeah, don't they want know to better. No. I don't think any actor or celebrity would want to. See, win. this is what you don't know. I've been a fan of his since Spawn. Mm. I've been so, watching. Yeah, yeah. I've been. I've been. So for me, being a fighter, it would be like, it would be like, that'd be, for me, that'd be the biggest 
that'd be the biggest event of the year. Him oh, fighting bro. another like actor or something. I, I like would it. love to see that. I mean, I, I would rather fight a fighter. You know, I mean, I, that's really? that it brings a lot more to. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to fight a, an actor. No. no. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that no one's ever tried to like bully you on set or like not bully you, but you know, try to start stuff with you because you're so mm. you're so disciplined in, in your martial arts and in your training and you've been known for that. I never give people a reason to, I yeah. don't think. You know, yeah, you seem I, very I just, humble about it. Yeah. Yeah, just I mean, you know, and I used to think that I was gonna be tested a lot. Oh, you did? Yeah, I used oh, to I used it. to think that that would happen. Um, you know, not many and even on the street and all that kind of stuff, but the the weirdest thing I it's been the opposite. I, I think the the rough, most uh, ruffian type of people kind of embrace me. Mm. You know, uh, it, it, like I I still don't I, I don't fear going anywhere. Right? I just, I just uh, I remember years ago I was um, visiting a uh, I was with my cousin in 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 uh, New York, and he was he wanted me to talk to his friend of his that was trying to do some directing. He was directing all kinds of like independent stuff and he was supposed to be really talented he said mike you got to talk to him i say okay he lived in the projects and i went to the projects and there was people that was like oh shoot michael Jawa. and my trick is you know when somebody goes oh my god it's a michael Jawa. i say hey how you doing well how you how's your day going oh it's good you know well nice to meet you and they're like they don't you know it, it throws them off like Damn, i'm gonna use that i didn't know what to do in that fucking oh situation. yeah you just turn it on them oh okay you just turn right back on them how you doing today whatever you know and and you know when it, they don't know this is so normal and so i go up and talk to this dude i was i was up for me about an hour hour and a half i come back down now the whole streets is alive there's a whole bunch of people waiting for me to come out and uh i was just saying speaking to folks and there's three cats straight out of jail kind of cat, right? <laughs> like the, you know, early days of the face tattoos and was like, you know, and it was like, yo, oh shit, man. I didn't know you was up in here, man. I didn't believe that shit. Yo, man, you, you, you know, and they talking to me, whatever, and it was like, oh man, you know, and I, and I so I did that whole turn it around on them thing. So what you, what y'all about to do? Oh man, we, we gonna go, this is a, um, at the Hemp Street ball, Ballroom, there's like a overflow parking lot, man. We're gonna catch motherfuckers slipping, man. We're gonna get paid and shit. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then and one of them, yeah, yeah, oh shit, man. Yo, if he come with us, oh man, yo, man, if you come, man, people will lay this shit out real quick, man. And, and I'm like, what, what, and it, it was all, like, yeah, hell yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, you you trying to get me to go rob people with you? <laughs> And it's like, yeah, man, ain't nobody want to fuck with you. They don't want that smoke, man. And I'm like, um, yeah, I'm kind of, they, they could kind of say, yeah, the guy that plays Spawn could, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, I, and I was like, you know, nah, man, you know, I'm going I'm to sit this one out, man. But, like, <laughs> but it was, you know, and I was like, yeah, I, I bid them peace. And I went on, on my way and I got in my car and I was just started laughing because I was like, man, that, for them to look at me as, a contemporary as as one of them i was i was weirdly flattered by yeah. by that instead That's of looking cool. instead of looking at me as a mark you know he probably got you know he got yeah. he got you know what he got in his pocket mm. you know that wasn't what they thought about and so where, where i go man i a lot of people know i know their struggle and i represent them you know, and I I always go back to the I go to your hood, man. I'm 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 in Memphis and I do motivational speaking and I and, and they're building something that you know I'm gonna be connected with me, Robert Townsend and whatever. Oh, they but love you I, out there. I you know, so that's what it is, man. Even if it takes me out of here, man, I'm gonna be who I am. Uh you know, like I said, I mean I I, I learned a lot, man. I I wasn't supposed to be here in a way. You know, the ch the chances were crazy. So I don't ever turn my back on my folks, man. That's what's up, man. And because um, that's what, you know, it's, you know, if not for certain images, I wouldn't be here. You know, that, you know, and, you know, we, we laid to rest. One of my biggest heroes was Jim Brown. I looked at him when I was growing up and I said, I want to be like that man. And he became like a father figure to me. Mm. And, uh, man, um, to, learn from him and work with him and, you know, do uh, outreach stuff. And he's, he was all about that. And for him to do his, my, his last movie he did in life was my movie that I directed. 
uh, you what, know, what's, what's the name of this movie? Yeah, um, uh, Outlaw Johnny Black. And he speaks the last words in the whole movie. And basically him and Fred Williamson, they say, the boy done good. He's, he's, and then Jim Brown says he sure did. That meant so damn much to me, you know? And so in their image and what, what they're about, man, I got, I got to keep that going. And so, you know, you know, it, it's, you know, some things are bigger than us, you know, and, and giving back and, and, you know, trying to make things better when you leave this world, you know, that's, that, that's a bigger thing. Mm. So, yeah, you know, I, I get a chance to do that. I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed. So, you know, a certain part of my life, a large part of my life is about giving back. And, you know, people who touch your heart and you, you feel for, like, what brings me here, man? You know, I believe in you, man. I'm a, I'm a big fan of you and who you are. Thanks, you know, man. and I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of what you're doing. You know, Thanks, so, you know, that's that's as it, simple as that. Thanks, man. Yeah. How, how is it directing and stuff, though? Is that that's something that's totally different than acting? But you know what the crazy thing is? I started out directing. I didn't know that. Here's what's weird about it. When I was in third and fourth grade, I used to put on puppet shows for, the, for, the, <laughs> for my class. When I was 10 years old, I used to shoot my own Super 8 movies and edit them together. Nobody told me to do that. Nobody around me was doing that shit. Mm. I was doing that early. It was out of, out of, you know, just, you know, what I wanted to do. And I would, I didn't know about editing, but I knew I want to take this, this frame and put it with this one and, and then the sound. And I started doing that stuff early. Wow. And when I got to college, I was, you know, I, I was thought, oh, you got to be a lawyer. You got to do this or whatever. But all the while I was doing acting work and doing my own videotapes and editing. So I luckily started fi finding what I was supposed to do in this world. Do you take cl classes for that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I was taking cl classes for it. But, you know, I didn't really know what I was supposed to major in or whatever. I just know I got up out the hood <laughs> within the skin of my teeth. And I was making, I was just, you know, just figuring it out. And then I was, you know, I became a school teacher. But while I was teaching school, I was going out for roles in New York. And, you know, eventually started doing off-Broadway theater. And I left teaching and I kept going mm. this direction. You know, you know, I'm lucky as hell, man. I'm so lucky. And, you know, all these things help me, man. The martial arts help give me discipline yeah. to be able to do the things I wanted to do, you know. Um, so, you know, all these things kind of coincided and, and, and helped me out. You got anything coming up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just directed a movie called Trouble Man. It's, uh, it's an action movie with uh, myself, Method Man, Mike Epps. My wife is in it with me. This is our, our sixth movie together. Wow, yeah. Um, uh, Lala Anthony, uh, Orlando Jones, and it, it's a it's a great movie. It's it's action. It's funny. It's um, yeah. It, it'll be coming out. It's supposed to be in the theaters in September. September. Yes. Wow. Yep. Yeah, we'll make sure we plug that in the, the description. If you guys are going to yeah. try to get more information on his new movie, make sure you guys go check out the description right now mm -hmm. in this video so that way you can see all the new information on his movie. One thing I want to touch upon as we go and we get ready to wrap up this podcast, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming on this thing. It's been just an honor to hear these stories and well, thank to you. sit across the table from you. And I remember I called you. It was like, or, uh, I, I was blowing up his DM and I was like, yo, come on, we got to get you on. And he was so quick. He said anything for Rampage without oh, a doubt. Up, Obviously, you know, it's not, I, I'm just the, I'm just the messenger here. So it's, it's the honor and the respect for you guys. And I was so happy when he hit me up. Cause like I said, you're the most requested guest we've been getting, you know, that's oh, not man, an MMA yeah. fighter. So I've been uh, so excited great. to get you on here. So thank you. Yeah. You know, we, we you know, uh, you know, we did three. Yeah, we did we three. Three movies in, that we're in. Together. Yes, but I hate, I hate uh, begging Rampage to call his friends because I don't want him to feel like he has to do that. Man, because sometimes, man, yeah. I do call my friends and they, and they like big time. Even, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I've been like doing the legwork. I've been doing the legwork. Yeah. It's okay. We all need assistance. I'm his. I just don't so, like. The, I just don't like to bother people. Yeah. I don't know why I'm like no, that. You, well, you, no, but you, he was so you gracious. I, he you, got you on the phone in five minutes. You, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, I like to. I don't like to ask for things. I like yeah. to give. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I know, you know, we, yeah, we come yeah. cut from the uh, same cloth, man. Yeah. But I was, I was saying about this, just the, the, just the, the uh, viewers probably don't know we're in three different 
Yeah, things we, together. We, what's the name of that bank robbing movie we did? Yeah, um, um, we played brothers. Yeah. We yeah. played brothers, cops and robbers. Yeah, cops and robbers. Yeah, yeah. They look like each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and for another movie, I did. The, the people used to sometimes when I had my hair cut short or whatever, think I was him, <laughs> right? And I put that because I in and never back down three with Josh Barnett. Yeah, I put that in the movie where where a, a running gag is everybody keeps thinking I'm Rampage Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, that was funny. and so I, 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 I brought, I put that in the movie, and then he does a cameo as himself, going, "Man, why are you running around and acting like you, <laughs> act like you me?" Well, you know, we were shooting that in, in Thailand. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, I did. I remember I did it on like on a laptop or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And then, um, and at the at the end when I'm supposed to fight Nate, Nathan Jones or whatever, and uh, uh, Tony Ja comes up to me and he starts going, "Ooh." Whatever, and I'm like, oh, he thinks I'm rampant. <laughs> and and, he's, and then uh, G. J. says, no, nah, no, nah, he he like his favorite movie is uh, Snow Dogs. He thinks you're <laughs> Cuba Gooden Jr. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and, and and Vigilante Diaries. Yeah, yeah. we did Vigilante yeah, Diaries. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. 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 You got a track record of movies. I've done, I've done, a, I've done yeah. a few, I've done yeah. a few movies. That's good too because lately you've been doing a lot more. I'm I'm excited to see you on the screen again. It's yeah, good well, to see you there. No, I don't want Besides you to see the ones I, I just yeah, did some yeah, moves yeah. in Thailand. I what? ain't talking about those. Oh, what you uh -oh. do? Thailand? You heard what he just said. Your acting gotten better. <laughs> I'm, it's hard, man. I don't know how you guys do it, man. Acting is you, you be in your mind a little bit too much. You got you. You just gotta stop doing that. You just got. You, well, it's like every time you get you get pulled over by the cops, you go into acting mode. Damn, because right. there's something at, at stake. It's, you just gotta not get you. If you see yourself, then you know you you, you shouldn't. You just gotta believe what's going on. If you believe it, other people believe it, and ain't nobody could be you. So that's the thing, man. If you're representing yourself, you can't be no better than that. So it, it, you just gotta, you know, it's just get out of your own head. Yeah, is I, what it is. I learned my my hardest things is is um, auditioning, and then when I do lines, when I if if like like, like I say eighteen reason mm -hmm. why people think I did such a good job in eighteen is because a lot of stuff that made it to to the into the movie it was ad lib mm -hmm. and I'm better at that right but the acting and just call it remembering the lines and saying the lines that's where if I you could remember this everything's an ad lib even the stuff that's written down think about it like that that everything you 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 got to make the lines that are written down feel like an ad lib. So you can say it in your own words, then say the line. Say it in your own words, say the line. It, sometimes it melts and you feel like it's an ad lib. That's what, that's what you want to go for. As a director, you, uh, you don't mind if the actor changes the lines a little bit? No, not, not, you know, not if, it, if, it, um, if it supports what, what you're being, being said. Because a lot of people, ain't go, you're going to know how your character talks better than a lot of times the director. You know, so um, yeah, no, I, I I think sometimes you can ad lib and make it much better, but you know, there's ways you can do things about uh, ad libbing and making it seem normal, and then you know, there's a certain technique yeah. where you you can do both, you know, but make the make the thing. That you're saying feel like the ad lib. Yeah. How how do you feel about um, writing? You know, have you ever read it, like a script and it was, and it was written for a black character, mm -hmm. but somebody that wasn't black wrote it, and you can tell. Oh yeah. That, that oh gets, yeah. That gets me all the time right there. Like yeah. what? You know how black people we talk like a certain way. Mm -hmm. We start, like sometimes we say uh, instead of there we say they like mm -hmm. like like um. You know how you know how we we mispronounce certain words with like ebonics, mm -hmm. and and sometimes when you read in the script and they're using proper English, and I try to talk with proper English and I try to text with proper English, mm -hmm. and even on Instagram, I post I try to use proper English just mm -hmm. where I, where I am, but I don't really talk like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we black people, especially from the south, we say they when we should say there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you just said. Right? You don't know understand what I'm saying? Okay, so <laughs> let me let me make for an example like um. Um, for for example, uh, uh, um, people have a, like a like a, like a nice car. Like, um, let me let me try let me try let me try. Give me a second. Let me. Um, it's like really really poor English. Like uh, when you trying to when you trying to let me try to get it out. 
Because I, like my mom, like if she said um, tire, it sounds like tie. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, right. Or, yeah. or like, you know, yeah, there's. Yeah, not that. Uh, that's the way you say a word. Like if I read, if I read uh, door, I'm going to say dope. Okay. You know, I'm going to say that. Mm. But, but like, um, like they close their, like they, that's their door. That's their house. Oh, okay. I'm going to say that's their house. Their house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. what I, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Right. Like, uh, you know, he's going back to their house, to their house. We was, I would say he's going back to their house. Mm -hmm. And that's really bad English. Yeah. And sometimes when stuff is written and they try to use ebonics, if when like it's not natural, it's just yeah, not natural, yeah. and it wasn't written by a black person, I could tell. Director gets mm -hmm. mad when you change the words. No, I don't know. It just, it just. Do I say it like the way I supposed, or do I say it like yeah. proper English and which yeah, one to sound right? See, right. it's 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 like it's got to be authentic to you. Uh, so sometimes when you're thinking about the word too much, it it pulls you out of it. Now you're you're a spectator to the, and not within it, you know? And if, I, I feel like if they, if you say whatever, whatever, and it's real to you, that's the best way. It's going to look better. It's going to sound better and everything, mm. you know? Uh, so it's got to be organic, mm. you know? And, and yeah, it's just to not just be, caught up in the word because you think about that then you, you're thinking like <laughs> your, your eyes do this before you yeah. but but you gotta because it really is about what's, what's in your heart and what you're thinking about at the time yeah yeah. and then if you're doing that you won't be seeing yourself in the room you know you gotta think from the character and then you won't even notice the difference between they and their you know what I mean you, you because you you're busy trying to convey what you're trying to convey yeah so that's that's the step. You just got to take. You just got to go from within it. I believe what's going on right now, and and when you do that, it's gonna. It, it, those things will fall into place. Yeah. Another problem I have is when you know, and when you act, there's a lot of people in the room, and you get kind of like, you get, you know, I watch movies, and I see people they acting and they and they so real, the facial expression and everything. Mm -hmm. But me, it's be so many people in the room, and I, and I. I, I I just get shy. It's just so many people in that damn room. If we, I want you. To, if you put it in the context, you risk the biggest embarrassment. Then ninety nine percent of the whole human race <laughs> getting your ass whipped in front of people. That's different. So, so talking shouldn't be shit. I know it's crazy. It, it, you know, it's so true. It, it, it's it's, so true. It, it's like you should be like like your 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 strength is who you are. You re you resonate confidence and and and, uh, and charisma and everything. So man, you should always be coming from that place, man. Really, and the hell with who's in the room, because if you're thinking about who's in the room, you're not thinking from the character, because the character ain't seen nobody in the room. You know, the character basically got something on their mind, and that's what it is. And then nothing else exists. If you do that, you're gonna Everybody in the room is going to disappear. They in this and that, that's going to disappear. You just, all you got to do is go, this is, this is my goal. I, I want this from this person. And you do that, it's going to be automatic. I feel you 100%. Mm -hmm. But it's like, um, you know, you, you get in your own mind like a fighter going mm -hmm. into acting and you think like, oh, you know, what motherfuckers thinking? Like, you know, most fighters can't act. And and vice versa. So you know, just imagine like if you really did went to MMA fight, people are gonna be like, ah, oh, watch this fighter, watch mm -hmm. this actor trying to fight. Right, so, but I ain't gonna be thinking that way. <laughs> yeah, you ain't gonna be thinking that way. <laughs> no. Yeah, you let are. them think that. But it's it's about what I'm thinking about. Okay. I'm you know my thing is I mean I get real relaxed fighting, which is weird. I've always been that way. I'm gonna go, you know, all I'm thinking about. I'm gonna move to this guy's right. I'm gonna see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch him at the end of this job. I, I'm going to look at this flaw that I see in this guy and see if he could fix it in the time of this fight. You know? And that's all that exists to me. And that's all that exists if I'm, you know, training with someone. That's all that exists if I'm acting. You know, all this other stuff goes away. Uh, just for anything. You know? If, if I'm with my woman, I'm, you know, I ain't thinking about all this. I'm thinking about that, you know? You know, just one thing at a time. It's just taking all of the noise and just focusing. Yeah, yeah. yeah and let it, you know, yeah, it's not okay to be nervous and all that type of stuff when you, all these things. But you know good and damn well, you get in the ring, 
you know, it's you and him. Yeah. Yeah. You see that you slip those, you know, you slip and rip, you know, like I'm saying, it becomes that same thing. It's just, you know, taking it out of the, out of the, uh, out of the cage in the ring and just putting it here, putting that same principle together. When you, so you know how to do that in the ring, you damn sure you can do that when you're acting. It's just like, this is all that I'm seeing. I'm looking at this person's eyes. I'm a, I see every little nuance. I see when, you know, he, you know, he's weaker or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's that same thing. Mm. I just got to get out of my own head. Yep, that's it. What about um, yeah. chore chore how you say it? Choreography. choreography. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about that? Do you prefer doing it right before you shoot the scene or you like to train it like the day before or the days up till the, your fight scene? Well, you know, uh, well, choreography, it's always you, you should have a, you should have it down to some degree. But just like with acting, if you get into a certain place and you say, okay, I know this choreography. Oh, but now we're going to shoot it here? Oh, that might change because there's a big-ass table in the way. And so I want to make it organic. And how can I make this, like, be its own thing? So it's always good that way. You could rehearse a scene in your head, right? And then, you, you know, then you get to get, you get on set and then you go, wait a minute. I, I, was, I was shouting this scene, but now... There's people that could probably hear me. There's people sitting on a and thing like, now nah, I gotta whisper this thing, you know. And I'm like, you know what I mean? So you 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 figure out what's gonna be organic and real. It's like you need to forget all that shit and then start over and say, this is a real situation. So it's they they, they all kind of coincide that there's all the stuff that you could focus on, but then you know it's got to be real to you once. You once they say action, and so you psych yourself up just like when they say fight. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm a different person when I fight, though. Different. Yeah, but but you don't need to be. You if you think about you taking that same energy and like I'm gonna fuck this scene up. I'm gonna fuck this scene up. I'm gonna kill this scene. All right, nothing else exists but this damn scene, and you take that warrior spirit and put it in there. I'm gonna do that in my next movie. I got yeah. one in July. Kind of fired me up. A yeah. yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's just to, you know you know taking the tools. You got the tools. Have I you ever it. hit somebody and and by mistake doing? Yeah, <laughs> not, not all, not all. I ain't Steven. <laughs> I remember one time in in uh, in uh, 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 Vancouver, I had bragged. I was on the set of uh, of uh, uh, Arrow. And I was just bragging about how I never hit nobody. <laughs> I never hit nobody clean. You know, I've I've always been able to like even if somebody messes up and if you know and I stop my my fist right by the head or whatever, should have shut the hell up. Cause that day I punched somebody in the head <laughs> like hard. I was like, God damn! It, I was I, I, don't, I was just talking about how I never hurt nobody, and I think it was probably it was a combination of both. But like, like. And I didn't get the choreographer, but I I cracked somebody. <laughs> Did you knock him out? No, no, no. Um, he he was resilient. He was hurt, but um, yeah. But you know that was probably the worst I ever really hit somebody. It, it happens. I did it once. I did it to Trench from oh, Not wow. About Nature and Trench. Trench. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he took it. Trench is a real fight. Trench is my number one. When I say. A, a, a rapper who really would fight, he's number one. Wow. wow. No, Tretch Tre is no joke. Really? Tretch is no I've seen Tretch, like, excuse himself one time, a long time ago. Yeah, you know And go over to about five guys and be like, what? You know? He looked you like got that. Some, and, 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 and basically was like this, you know, whatever. And then came right, you know, and they were like, all right. And he came back. So anyway, <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trash is no joke. He looked like the type. No, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. He's a cool dude too. Very, very. And you see the people who really got theirs, they don't brag about that. Nah, they don't yeah. they don't wear it on their sleeve or whatever. Yeah. But you know, he's 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 that cat. Like I, yeah. you know, he he's he's somebody who don't just, you know. Bro, I felt yeah. so bad and and he was like, Oh no, it's fine, it's fine. I, I know I hit him pretty good. Mm -hmm. I just hit him. Yeah, you huh. hitting somebody. Yeah, I, I hit him, I think it was with a right hand or something. Where? In the head somewhere. Oh man! And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It, it wasn't a full, right, right. But right. it was pretty good. Yeah, and I felt, I felt bad. He was like, no, and then we just kept on going. Oh, I hit Randy Couture one time, oh. 
and my hand hurt for about a week and a half. <laughs> Man, like, this it was Big like a head. helmet. Yeah. And he just, I was like, you okay? He said, yeah, I'm fine. I was like, I'm not. <laughs> Where'd you hit Randy at? What, were you on set somewhere? Yeah, we were, we were doing a movie in, um, in uh, Romania. Damn. Wow. Was it one of the Spendables? No, 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 no. It, wasn't, no, it was, uh, I think it was called The Hard Way. Oh. And uh, something got mixed up and I think it was a duck, or, but it caught him on the top of the head. And my goodness, man, I was, I would not want to do that again. Mm. That's a tough cat. Yeah, he got tough. He, he tough. He <laughs> got a hard head. I trained with him before. Yeah, he tough. Yeah, and he and toughest. he would pick me up and, and like like nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like like he's strong. For sure. Randy Couture is Randy Couture but, strong? Because he's older now. Oh, he's, he's like seventy. He's like seventy. No, he's not the same 70. age. You and Randy. You and Randy. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, no. We he he was thirty seven for like four years <laughs> when he was in the MMA. Randy's, oh, man. Randy's, Randy's, he's not seventy. Uh, no, no, no. no, no come hell, on, no. you crazy man! Come on, he's he's older. He's coming I mean, on the podcast in two weeks. I mean, Randy's, tell him that. Yeah. Randy and I are about the same age, probably. Yeah, we still don't know that. Hey, let's look at how old Randy. Yeah, Listen, yeah. Before before we wrap up, yeah. <clears throat> I do want to ask you. You got to work with one of the most talented actors of all time, Heath Ledger, oh, yeah. uh, on, on The Dark Knight. So mm. before we wrap up, I really just want to know your experience working with him and, and what that was like. Yeah, man, he was just chill. He was so chill, and you know, it breaks my heart when people try to try to put the narrative out there like he was, you know. Uh, Haunted by some dark demons because he had to do the dark night. There's nothing like it that. It was nothing like that. Oh man, he was easy going. We were we were always doing like these little magic tricks because I would whenever I leave home, I come back to my kids and I'd always you know have a new magic trick. I would go to wherever you go. There's always magic places, you know. And I would work on a new trick. And I you know, when I come back home, you know, the kids would be like, "What you got for me?" <laughs> but so Heath was doing the same kind of thing. We so we would practice magic stuff and sleight of hand things. And even when I was trying to leave him alone and other people try to leave him alone, he's like, hey, what? he's so engaging, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, he's a real, real nice guy, man. And, uh, and uh, one of the things, uh, one story I always tell is that uh, I remember when the first time we were working, we did this the big boardroom scene and he comes in and He's <laughs> he's doing all that kind of stuff and talking to us and we, we're dealing. And the camera is showing us, right? He's beside the camera. So we do all a lot, uh, one half of the room or whatever. And I asked the director, I said, what are we going to do after lunch? He said, well, we're going to finish up this half of the room. And I was like, oh, so Heath's not going to be on camera. He said, no. So he spent four hours in makeup just for us. Wow. Yeah. People don't know how serious that is. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. That's that's the truth. Man. Wow. That's what kind of cat he was. Wow. Was yeah. he was he like I heard that he was always in in character like man. No. See, that's what the story was. Yeah. See, that's some bullshit. Yo, oh, oh you think you, we were doing magic tricks and he was like, hey, hey, <laughs> yeah. watch, watch this. <laughs> no, no, he was not he, he No, he was he, oh. he was so just, he was a good dude on and off to say he wasn't he always was in the Joker not, character. No, no, not wow. not when I was working with him. Wow. Never was. That Bro, is he the was narrative. A, yeah, he was the best Joker. That's why they probably went with that narrative. He, he was something else. Oh, he but, was but, talented. But, but yeah. you see when he's doing the stuff like when he, you know, doing the thing with the remote control yeah. or the hand sanitizer, he's playing. He's having fun. Even when he was, uh, you know, doing the thing with me, he would try different voices and everything. And uh, when he would do, I said, you know, I was like, when he was doing this kind of like a Tom Waits kind of voice. I don't know if you know who Tom Waits. I'm older. I'm older than you. We established that. <laughs> you ain't ready. <laughs> but 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 there's a guy named Tom Waits that, that kind of talks very similar. Scooby Doo. Yeah, but like what? No. Anyway. <laughs> Scooby Doo sounds like Scooby Doo. No, no he's no, 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 Scooby Doo. Don't sound like that. You know, Scooby Doo's like, yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah, you, you, you uh, 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 onto Heath Ledger. <laughs> but but it, well, so he would tell he, he would try. Sometimes he would do other kind of voice, or whatever. But when he did that one, I was like, man, that one is a little chilling, man. That makes me look at you like, yo. He said, you think so? And he was, and he would just 
He was trying to find it at that time. So that's a guy who's really kind of not taking himself all that serious. He's trying things to make it work and playing, you know. He was really a really open and just fun guy. And the thing that gets on my nerves is that people try to say that that's what led him to his death. No, he was on another movie. Mm. The, the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. That was another movie. Mm. Like, I, I don't know, damn near half a year later that where he passed away. Oh, so yeah, the movie's already done. and Yeah, so, he'd finished The Dark Knight. And it just wasn't know, out yet. Well, it was being, you know. Edited and yeah, all, and all that type yeah. of stuff. But he was on a set of another entirely different movie oh. when he passed. You know? Well, I'm just totally confused. I yeah. thought the whole thing was that he was so in character he couldn't get out of it or something. No, that's no, what that's what was. people want to believe because yeah. they want to take down powerful people and you know, yeah. and you know, the, the, oh, he's flawed. Oh yeah, he's got this, but but he he you know he got too deep into no, it's bullshit. Mm. That's what that's the mm. narrative people want to draw from it. Was you on set the day he blew up the hospital? No, no. Oh, no. no. They, they said that it was like um he had to ad lib because it didn't blow up when he pressed the button. Right. Did you hear about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was that true? Yeah, well, yeah, I believe so. But like again, he was playful. Yeah. Uh Christian Bale was not playful. That dude was kind of serious all the time. But he Heath Ledger he was, was always Batman. He's kind of he's kind of serious. I think I think you might know that by Yeah, you know, I heard just, I heard about him cussing some people out before. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like that, that wouldn't have been he, Heath. Uh, he wouldn't have done. He always wanted to stay in character as Batman, is that why? I don't know. Uh, I don't know but he damn sure was pretty damn serious all the time. You didn't get along with him? Well, I didn't have to. Like it, there wasn't much that I had to deal with. Mm. But I did fuck with him one time. <laughs> Like, cause, uh, cause he was like in the in the suit, and I was like, I get I get a chance to, to tease you because shit, I was spawn. I was <laughs> so if anybody in the room knows what, how it feels to be, you know, under all that oh, kind yeah. of prosthetic and stuff. But yeah, he and he just kind of was like that. But he didn't, you know. So it was just it was whatever. Silly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. How long it take you to do the makeup for spawn? Oh man, that, it you know, about three hours. Jeez. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that was like. You know, all these pieces, they was glued to my face. And yeah, that was kind of- Like every kinda, morning you just sit in the chair for three hours? When I had to do that burnt yeah. look. Wow. You know. That is crazy to just have to sit there every morning. How, how many times do you think you had to put on that makeup? I, I broke a record. What? Because I remember asking them, I said, um, well, what's the status on, you know, the an analytics of this uh, about consecutive days in makeup? And he says, uh, well, we'll let you know once you're done. I said, what do you mean? He said, the only other person that's had more makeup in a movie is Freddy Krueger. And Freddy Krueger ain't in every scene. He just pops up. So he might be in makeup a couple times a week. You look like this. And people basically got used to me looking like that, like that's what Mike looks like. And they're complaining about how hot they are and shit like that. And I'm going to poke your eye out, you know, <laughs> you complaining to me. And you don't realize I'm encased in all this rubber, but they get used to you. But so when I ask, they, they're like, no, you have more consecutive days than anybody who's ever done a movie because you're the lead and you are in makeup all the time. Wow. And so, yeah, so that was a, you know, it broke a record. So I broke the Freddy Krueger record because wow. he didn't have to be in every scene. That's crazy. Wow, that's a stat, right? Yeah, that's there. A, hey, that's an analytic. Yeah. And that's why he that's why he was saying that uh, Heath Ledger did four hours to come back just to be in a scene where he really didn't have to. He, he could have had to stand in. He yeah. could have had to stand in and do it. Yeah, yeah. Ask me if I would have done that as Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, unreal. Ooh. I appreciate you unpacking all these stories and letting <laughs> us kind of go down memory lane and letting me be a just a fly on the wall in some of these stories. It's been amazing to hear well, thank this. And, you, and thank you, man. I thank hope, you, I hope man. the Jackson Podcast community appreciates this. And and honestly, thank you, bro. Drove all the way down, hours in traffic, I assume. Like, it's just, it takes a lot to bring these style shows together. So I'm always very humbled and very gracious when people like you come by. And I hope the, the community sees that as well. Yeah, y'all go back and watch Black Dynamite, because that's some fun <laughs> ass shit. I don't know, I don't know uh, why you got the idea to come up with, that, uh, like, Rudy Raymore type shit. Yeah, what? yeah, man. Hey, I, it's, it's a love letter to, you know, things I loved when I grew up. Yeah, uh, I, Eddie Murphy tried to do it after you, though. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. I was, yeah. I was very... Very flattered behind that. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, good. yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen. Michael J. White, the one and only. Michael J. White, say it, say it, get it right. I can't just say the J. I didn't no, want to no, no. It. You gotta do job. So I'll, I'll let you say it then. 
No, no, no. Go ahead. No, Just no, no, no. I'll let you say. Hey, the one and only, Michael Jai White came by to see us, man. I appreciate that, I man. I appreciate you, bro. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Okay. Always good to see you. Always Absolutely. good. That's it. Jackson Podcast, we out.